All right, well, we've since been joined by Pascal Odebo, who is a financial consultant. Thank you for coming on this morning as well. Thank you, guys. So we just had a former member explaining what exactly happens, how he thinks that if we focus only on the remuneration of the National Assembly members, it may not uh, give us a proper picture. It may be tantamount to looking at the world from a keyhole. He thinks we should look at it holistically for remuneration for public office holders. What do you think of it? I absolutely agree with him. Um, it's just that sometimes um, some of these guys speak and yet they are, they are the carriers of the benefits of uh, such, such uh, conversations. You know, I think the Nigerian people need to wake up. You know, Serap is doing good. Some other people are doing good. And, you know, and, and they are on a, on a consistent engagement of, just as he said, various arms of government. But who are the guys at the, at the receiving end of all this? The people. You know, yesterday night I was watching television and I saw that the Austri Austrian prime minister is under intense pressure as we speak to resign. And they're calling for a snap election because they saw him on television, you know, having a conversation on how to give a Russian guy, a lady, a business. The following morning, two days later, the, his office was besieged by the people asking for a snap election. The chancellor immediately disassociated and agreed that this was wrong. And all the alliances they had that ruled that country all came out and said this was, he came out and said, you know what? Uh, I mean, I was under the influence of alcohol and all manners of things. And the place is, going, is under some kind of catharsis. Nigeria requires a catharsis. This is what I, that's, that's what I think. I think that the people must come to a place where they engage their people head on, one on one, and ask them, your productivity, is it, is it commensurate with the kind of income you generate, you make? Some of these things are hedonistic. They are sinful. Some of the income that they make, these guys sit down and make, you know, I find it ridiculous. And that is not to say that they are not doing any work, but it is not commensurate with the kind of work that they're doing. I believe public officers must see work as fundamentally a, a service to nation. And, and then the, the remuneration that they make is like, almost like a compensation. And to sit down and begin to apportion yourself you asked me to come this morning to speak. I didn't ask you to give me a clothing allowance. Some of the demands, some of the things, and this, by the way, they are legal. They are, these, are, these, are, these are enshrined by the law. So how do you deal with So that? you need to go to the roots, the, go to the jugular. The people who, the, you know, when we say, let this country be restructured, people sometimes think, you know, they take it from where it concerns them. It concerns everybody. Fundamentally, a whole lot of these of the structures here. A con you know, yesterday I was also reading um, Simon Kolabole's article. You know that this country is brewing for a revolution, and it's not because somebody is going to plan it. It's just going to be the people. They are watching you live larger than life. They are watching you take your children abroad. They are watching you beat down uh, uh, leg legislation that will regulate people traveling abroad for medical reasons. You refuse to bring world-class universities to our country. You refuse to bring world-class health services to our country. Yet you use the resources of this country to take care of yourself. Is that the I reason think, why, I think is it that, is simple. Is that the reason why we're seeing those kidnappings especially targeted at uh, government officials, lawmakers, even university lecturers, and, and in some instances, expatriate workers? The chicken has come be, to roost. This is, are you linking it to that? Given by you, I am. I am. Absolutely. It's an economic issue. And vengeance and anger. You gave birth to children, you didn't know where they were, you didn't know how they went to school. You just keep producing them as if they're chicken, and then they are mature now. They are now carrying the AK-47s. You can't go home. You can't go home. And the point here is that the, the elite needs to recalibrate. They need to clean up themselves. You know, it's called, it's called a light self-interest. When you deal with a matter before it gets to you. All right, we'll continue uh, when we come back in just a moment. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Sunrise AI. I tell you, you don't know how heated this subject matter is. I, I can tell you for free. But you know, Moni, looking at this particular matter, yes, it's been broached for a long time. Almost everybody asks who have an opinion about what needs to be done. But let's hear from you. I mean, what do you think we should do to approach this and solve it once and for all? I think we should start looking at things holistically. Let me take, for instance, if you let's give it to those that are collecting allowances and salaries on the public officer side the public officers are used here are used advisedly the legislators and the executive now if you want to give it to them fully let's say you you are in a private establishment what are the entitlements that you should be given as a private establishment. Let us say we want to pay them the allowances and salaries of a person in a private establishment. But remember that they are in public office. And public office suggests one thing. When you, when, when, you, when you serve in public, you have to be sure that you are not living over and larger than the public itself. Now, the Nigerian public that I see that you are talking about mm -hmm. are those that you have said their business is 30,000 naira per month. But you heard what the former member said yes. about how they need to find for several other members. They get to their constituencies. They spend all that amount of money. Some of them, when they leave office, they don't have, even have money to purchase uh, uh, call credit. Let, let me tell you, nobody forced you to be a legislator. It's a thing that you decided to go into. Nobody, for example, a boxer cannot say... I am in the ring, I have, my faces have been, have been battered. That is no, that is for letting off into Julia. A person who consents to violence cannot complain. So if he's saying they would use all the money to entertain, who are you entertaining? That is the question. Well, I think he will be able to answer. All right, let's get to Abu Jamakwe. They have response to that. Yeah, I, I'm saying that the reality is that voluntary non-fit in Julia is not the issue here. This is politics. You want to serve. You want to f serve your people. It's your desire. Okay, the law doesn't say you must be rich to serve. Somehow you, you are able to find your way to gain to power. And then you incur heavy costs. I thought we should be looking at the risking the process of winning election, removing that cost, and then you get elected, you serve the people like they do in England, the, the population is not putting pressure on you, we create a socio-economic environment that makes it impossible for anybody to walk into your office and ask you to pay for jam, to pay medical bills, to pay is, for security. Is it up to the politician to start looking for innovative ways to de-risk the process? Because so, you know, that is what I'm saying. I, we we need to have a national conversation. We don't need to pin down the politicians. To, uh, they, let me look at the members of the National Assembly to say, look, you must do this. Because I the, think the questions if we, that will be asked, if you, if you now say, oh, I sold property, and I, you know, I'm, I'm totally broke by the, time I get, by the time I get there. Nobody believes you. Nobody will listen to you. No, the question is, why should you sell property? Are you, well, is yeah. it really about the Nigerian people, or is this some sort of national lottery you're hoping to win? when you eventually enter office? Look at the way, it, it, the, the biggest way people earn a living today. So you see billionaires go into politics. Former governors, after serving for eight years, want to go back to Senate. They don't want to get out of the system. Mm -hmm. It is because, why do you think they want to do that? Because of service? It is because they want to take care of themselves, take care of their future, their grandchildren, maintain the status they found themselves at some point. So it is not necessarily about, um, well, it's more about material things, really. It's, it's, you, nobody can deny that fact. But you can also have a genuine desire to serve. And I am saying that you should not close the door to those who have that genuine desire to serve because of the cost that it will take you to get in there or to make it possible for you to be effective. That is why I'm talking about all these extraneous uh, impacts on the activities of, I mean, in the whole process. So I think that uh, to be more realistic about this thing, the National Economic Council should, there should be a conversation around this thing before the, or shortly after the House comes 
uh, is inaugurated, and then in, maybe a bill can be sent there to restructure this, what is paid to public officers. If you have a solid salary that looks good, then the other allowances can be you know, removed. What is the salary of, it, uh, of members of national? None of them earns officially up to 700,000 naira a month. That is the truth. So that is why they pursue everything to make up. You can't go home on a weekend without, with 250,000 naira and expect to return to, to Abuja with petrol in your car. You know, that is the reality. But you will say, why do it? Who forced you to do it? Yes, there is risk in everything you do. But there is also the desire for you to do certain things, to serve, not to serve, to be in the bank, to be in the foreign service, to be in the armed forces. So we have to look at all this, how we spend public money generally. Okay, if we, if we say, okay, no budget, no budget should commit more than 50% to recurrent expenditure, I work with that fifty percent, but right now we, uh, you know what, you know what we spend on the current expenditure. It's across board, so to single out the national assembly is not really. Uh, so you think we're making a scapegoat of the national assembly? Absolutely, but I if know, they represent I know the in people, reality, shouldn't we start with them? Yeah, that is what I'm saying. The reason why they, they are getting the, uh, the, 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 the people are focusing on them is basically because everybody expects that they can do something about it, and I have admitted and I've said that they can't really do something about it. They can, they will pass the law. If the law comes to them, they can debate it, put it in the public sphere, let people contribute, let realistic options come up on how to manage or how to fund public officers, uh, the, the activities of public officers. You know, sometimes you see the, uh, the convoy of a Senate president, and then you ask yourself, you know, you see the disparity between the Senate president who was just another member yesterday, and the member. You know what I'm saying? And then you see principal officers walking around, uh, another principal officer, or even the civil servants walking in the National Assembly, living better than members, or the special advisors to these people. Chief of, this, this, they have chief of staff, they have this and that. Live it better than members. So you look at all these disparities, you know? And then the parastators, the ministers that are unelected, the, that is the, the PTDF, the blah, 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 the videos, you know, there are a lot of them. And then you see the, you see the National Assembly people going cap in hand, begging them, looking for, you know, trying to exploit something from the corruption industry to take care of themselves, to be able to function effectively, or, I mean, to be able to meet public expectation. We have to deal with the whole question of how we budget. Is our budget an academic exercise or, a, or an act of law? or a law made by the National Assembly. We have to look at all that. The Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission, I mean, it's a commission. It's supposed to fix salaries. What is the basis for uh, calculating these salaries? Mm. Uh -huh. so, so we, what, sh we should be asking all questions, all those are questions around people, FAC as well. All those are questions that generally we should look at all that. This people didn't just work. Many, if I, I can tell you that many members of the National Assembly, they don't know the budget of the National Assembly. Mm. This is a secret known only to the principal officers and the bureau, top bureaucracy well, of the we, National we, Assembly. We will be hosting a member of the National Assembly very soon, and we'll, we'll definitely put that question to him. Yeah. But we have to thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. You're welcome. Honorable Abdul Ora is a former member of the House of Reps. He is also a former Commissioner of, of Commerce and Industry in Edo State, and a former ED of the Executive Director of, of Civil Liberties Organization. Oh, that's it for now. It's back to you, Chamberlain. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Mark. Well, gentlemen, having listened to him talking about the, what the issue really is mm -hmm. from his perspective, what do you think? What uh, kind uh, of solution let me, be? Let me, let, me, let me maybe give this thought. This, you know, whenever you do a change of government, yeah. you, 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 you hire a president who comes in with an agenda. I believe very strongly that Nigerians voted for the, the president because they believe he's a man of integrity and that he will bring some measure of architecture of order. This whole thing should be brewing around his table. The president, as he begins to be inaugurated on the 29th of May 2019, 
physics history. It's either we continue this way, or he comes with an agenda and hires the people that will assist him to bring the reform this country requires very, 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 very urgently. How does he do that? It is important. How does he do that? Let me show you. Let me when, tell you. I will give you in a minute. The, I can. The, the separation of powers. No, 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 no. Please. You also you can see whenever they want to go to the judiciary, they want to go to the legislature, they can go. That's, that's the power of the executive. If you want to bring, when you come in as a government, you want to bring a reform, that reform is driven by law. So who you make, and Clement Wango mentioned this in your program too, last week, who you make your, as your um, attorney general is key. The individual will churn out the laws that match the kind of reform you want. If you want economic reform, if you want political reform, if you want legislative reform, and this will be captured in a legislative agenda. Gradually, you'll be pushing it and pushing it. <coughs> if you don't do it, you're going to get 30 bills that you can't sign because they don't match your legislative agenda. So my suggestion, unsolicited as it may look, is that the president must put his hand on this saddle. Let me follow up on that. I remember in 2015, at the time, a lot of people said, oh, okay, this doesn't look bad. I think the president and the vice president at the time, they were quoted, reported in the dailies in 2015 that they were going to take, they were going to forfeit 50% of their salaries. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, this conversation yes, yeah, was yeah. rife at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we remember yeah. that. Yeah. So, but whether or not, uh, was that institutionalized, we don't know. Uh, did I may have said, was he signed? Did he amend the laws? What happens to the other part of it? Was, he, was the procedure properly adhered to? Jimmy, that's what I'm about. Some the of the things you see people do, especially in our clients, are tokenisms. Tokenisms are, you know, give, uh, you, give you, you throw something in the air. How should they have done it differently? No, no, I'm not even talking about this government. It's, it's not, this government is a product of so many governments that have refused to do the no, critical things. I'm saying here yeah, that, that if you want to bring certain reforms yeah. as a government, you get your... That's why people hire the best hands in government. In America, in England, in Australia. Check the people that work with Clinton. Check the people that work with Blair. Yeah, they but, bring but in their best hands because for, for they are to going to do a, a hard work. So is that not something to build upon? No, but if you say it and it is not carried down, it's not drilled down, that's what the boys who are there are supposed to do, to set the agenda, to set the engagement and bring the, the ethos of the government, the who soul. Goes, who goes, hold on, who, who goes to the RMAFC and ask, for instance, say, we need the... The executive, that's what I'm talking we about. Need, we need those salaries. If you we want need to, to bring, review them. Again, but because of your time, let me cut you short. If you want to deal with these issues of overblood, it's somebody who works as part of the, you know, vision drives strategy. Strategy is driven by business, but I'm telling you, I've, I've given you this in before. If you don't have that vision, tomorrow you're going to call me about infrastructure decay. Next morning you're going to call about capital market issues. But if at the, what they call the tone at the top, you are able to get a team that looks at the value chain of Nigeria and its governance. And they will be able to apportion themselves. You will see reform come, set up, you will be partnering with them to work. However, what you see these guys do is that when they wait and watch, before they can't see anything, they throw something at you. But you know they say that <laughs> 4.6 billion is not much. 4.6 billion is not much to go to the lawmakers. That will always be an argument uh, for them. You want to start another? That's what they say. No, compared to the size Sorry. of the economy, uh, 4.6 billion is not too much for the lawmakers. Gamba, you're not, you're not getting my point. My point is this: whether it is five naira or 4.6 billion or 10 billion naira. Let's be strategic about it. No, sorry, you must sorry. get a, a, a thinking within the executive that we are here to bring reform. And I'm not talking to throwing money Mr. at Mr. things. I want you to quickly weigh in on this, and I'm sure that Mr. Mimini would also. You said sure the other time that the people need to play a frontal role yes. in this whole thing. Yes. In a few words, yes. how should that be done? It is called citizenship awareness. And that's their job. All this uh, um, 
uh, human rights organizations, uh, CSOs, CSOs and uh, that's their job. It, because they can't do it. All they do is, in a city of Sunday, they, they go to court. All those things are tokenisms. They're just trying to show that we are here. So they want to CSOs, get to us to a place where we would now say, ah, when Okonjo Wala was advertising the amount of money that was being given to the states, she was not doing it for any, he was doing it so that people can come up and say, hey, my governor, you got this money last year, last month. What are you doing with it? Right. Okay, you know, the RMAFC actually require at least one third representation from 36 states and the FCT to be deemed to have been properly constituted. Now, if they have only seven national commissioners, they can't do anything. You see, that is, that is not taking issues seriously. You see, when a body is supposed to be properly constituted in terms of numbers and members, mm -hmm. you cannot have a deficit of that membership and number and expect them to work effectively. That is to say we are not even serious about the work of the Revenue and uh, Fiscal and Allocation Committee. Yes. So again, we want to start, we should start querying the Revenue and Fiscal Commission. What, uh, what, what is the basis? What is the template they use in making these allowances and making these salaries? But the presidency, so they need to appoint those members. So and that's what I'm the saying. members are not properly, if they don't have a quorum, they can't even do anything. Exactly. So, so all right. that is the problem. So, there you go, gentlemen. We have to thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, Mumuni, uh, Pascal Dubo, first of all, is a financial consultant. And then we have uh, Mr. Dito Kumbo Mumuni, who is executive director for Serap. Thank you both for coming on today.